We are convened here today <laughs> at the Express Subcommittee on Benghazi and the crimes of the bitch Hillary Clinton. Mm-hmm. This will be do called you, to order. Do you, do you? I'm calling to order. This is Representative Trey Gowdy. Uh, gavel. <laughs> gavel in. <laughs> Ma'am, do you remember the email from Sidney Blumenthal on December 7th, 2010? They said, I keep telling my sweet boy to go to the new school and he <laughs> won't do it. You ever felt anything like that, you bitch? No, Secretary sir. Clinton, I can't do a respond. fucking impression. I'm not. Se- Secretary, <laughs> Secretary, <laughs> Secretary Clinton, please respond. <laughs> Secretary Clinton. This is bullying. I can't do it. I'm not an actress. Secretary Clinton, <laughs> please Aww. respond. I think you are an actress. I think yeah. you acted like you didn't you didn't kill Ambassador Stevens for his homosexual affair with Barack Obama. Secretary Have Clinton, you ever heard respond? That, that theory? Oh yeah. No, I talked to Ben I talked to Ben Mora about that conspiracy theory for a long time. That's the that's what you were doing this week? No. You were trying to figure out if Obama was gay. <laughs> Obama is gay. No, nah, like I wish I mean, Obama why not? was gay. Yeah. He's I wish he was. He's like instead when Obama has an affair and it's coming, it's gonna mm-hmm. see, he's gonna like it's gonna happen. It's gonna be with some chick he met at a Nora Jones concert. It's gonna be with <laughs> Olivia Rodrigo. Obama's been grooming her since like 2015. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Um, no, he's not gay though. It's like if he was gay, I don't know. He would have really fucked that guy in Peoria. He did not. That, do you remember that when the guy was yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I Barack Obama smoked crack while I blew him in a limo. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They yeah. used to parade was- all those guys out. It's funny because actually this is a good transition into the episode. Because going through all this, I was like reliving the Obama years and there's so much Mm. shit that I fucking forgot. (laughs) And that is actually one of them. I remember they used to trot out all those kinds of people. There was other ones that they tried before that they tried after that too, I think. Like, yeah, yeah, the people who'd be like, I knew Michelle when she was a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was a big thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like a significant portion of people who were like, Cause I always thought it was a joke, but like you'll see people be like, "Yeah, she like has a has like a, a not only a penis but like a sizable penis." Like you can see it. Like there <laughs> it were people just who be like a normal s- penis. <laughs> yeah, like they were like they should have like, been like she has a, a huge, really small penis. Yeah, she's yeah. Got, like Obama's. Oh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, Michelle is a man, but like she is not packing heat. Yeah, um, that's the most embarrassing thing. That's the thing they're trying to keep from getting out. Yeah, that yeah, it's like exactly. Four inches. That that would make Obama Barack uh, more straight, so they can't yeah. have that. With that being said, my that name is nice. Bryce. <laughs> I w- I was just going to say we, we have to Felix. We have to sorry, introduce ourselves sorry. right now. My name is Bryce. <laughs> I'm Liz. <laughs> We're joined by check this out, Felix the, Biederman. Oh my God! First and last name, and of course, producer Young Chomsky. The podcast is called True and On. Now we can start. We're investigating over uh, allegations recently made uh, <laughs> that Barack Obama is gay. Yeah, gay Just with playing. his wife, Michelle. Mm-hmm. No, we are doing a September 11th episode because it's September yes. 11th. But this, is a, this isn't like your, your, your normal kind of turn on September 11th episode. It's kind of different September 11th episode because it's the September 11th you fucking forgot mm-hmm. Benghazi. This is actually literally your father's September 11th episode. Yeah. <laughs> what What are your guys' Benghazi memories? Um, my see, Benghazi memory. It's hard for me to not immediately think about uh, the email stuff. I just I still am like all consumed by Hillary Clinton's emails and that coming yeah. out of Benghazi. That yeah. stuff comes right to the front of my brain. But also because I was like an email truther, <laughs> which is very on brand for me. I was like, no, you guys don't understand. This is actually a problem. 
Like she's having an affair with Sidney Blumenthal. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, during 2012, the entirety of 2012, I was, uh, that was like the height of my heroin addiction. Mm. And so like that was Occupy going on then, right, too? Yeah. Was that yeah. Certain, yeah. I missed all of that. I was like dimly aware that any of this was happening. And so I didn't really like, I, I, I missed all of that and kind of caught up to it in 2014. Um, but yeah, I, it made zero impression on me. Like, I don't even know if I knew the attack happened. I wasn't exactly the most news literate in that, in that era of my life. What about and you, Now you Felix? can't get enough. I was no. like, I was actually just like, I had been living in a sober house and had just moved out. And Classic. then like, yeah, then like my friend from there was like, was like, oh, did you hear? They like killed the ambassador because of some movie. And I was like, <laughs> I was like not paying. I was like following some Joe Budden drama, and I was like, yeah. oh, that's crazy. That yeah, sucks. wild. <laughs> and that's not fair. What was the? Is it a movie I know? They kill him over Equilibrium. <laughs> it is. It is actually, and we will get to that. It is an incredible film, um, of which. I do believe, and this is my my Benghazi theory. I do believe a full length version of the movie does exist, but has been uh, kept kept from us by the censorious government. Yeah, no, like that was a funny explanation. I remember I was watching Real Time with Bill Maher at the time, and I do remember Glenn Greenwald going on and being like, "This is like no, they like this is not what happened." Like I'm serious. <laughs> yeah. Like I just like don't believe they killed him over this like Danish bullshit. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And Bill Maher was like, if you have one religion where you can't watch a channel awesome movie about Islam. <laughs> Dude, but that's you know? the thing. That's like, so, okay. When we were like doing this research, I, there's so much of this shit I forgot, which is also how insane everyone was about Islam at the time. Dude, yeah. people between, between 2007 and like, I will say like the Bataclan attacks, uh, basically every European spent three to seven hours a day drawing Muhammad. Yes. There was like, like you could up until like, say like 2016, probably you could get into like the op-ed of the New York times or anywhere with mm -hmm. an article. That's like, you know, the world has an Islam problem. Yeah, mm -hmm. you could just write. You could write, write like Robert Spencer type shit, like Pam Geller type shit. Yeah, and it was yeah, just yeah. like totally okay to do. Like yeah. it wasn't definitely not like the full like mainstream opinion on that, but it was like maybe more insidiously, it was okay for sort of like you know center liberal to center right people just to be like, hey, you know, I'm not Pam Geller. I don't think we need to kill like 10 percent of all Muslims, but like you know. There's a problem with Islam that's specifically because of how they're bad people, yeah. which is it, like if you look at it in the backdrop of everything that was going on with what we were doing in Syria and Libya is hysterical in retrospect. Insane. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. I mean, that's really the crux of this episode is we are making the case that America deserved 9-11. Um, this is like as as we will lay out for you in this episode – Literally everything that happened was, I'm victim blaming here, was not only the people who died's fault, but also the fault of one Hillary Rodham Clinton, yeah. who is, by the way, definitely at least, I think Sidney Blumenthal also wants to have sex with her, which I'll, I can get into at length for like a several hour side episode I'm doing on my own. Um, <laughs> That's the one thing I won't moralize about with Benghazi. It's like, I get it. Yeah, I get it. I mean, yeah, she's yeah, like, you guys Hillary are did nine eleven. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. So, and also, we will get into the other Hillary nine eleven later as well because that factors into this too. With unfortunately, her <laughs> that's the her, second tower that fell. The, that yeah, was, yeah, the third. That would, no, she was building. Uh, I don't know. I don't even know what joke to make there. It was actually one of the worst days of my life because it reminded me of her humanity. Um, <laughs> So we can't talk about 9-11, Benghazi, which is what happened, 20, 2012? That would be nine years ago at yeah. this point? Lifetime ago. A lifetime ago. lifetimes ago. Yes. I mean, it's a completely different world than the world we're living. Actually, basically the same world, just kind of worse. Uh, but we can't talk about that without talking about Libya itself, pre-9-11 Libya. We're just going to keep referring to this, by the way, to confuse everyone as 9-11. So just like yes. fucking go with it. Just know yes. that when we say 9-11, we mean Benghazi. 
If you follow the Kasparov timeline theory, they happen six months apart. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So um, thankfully, Felix is actually not our only guest here. We have a special guest to talk about the Arab Spring with us. Uh, Molly Crabapple will be joining us uh, <laughs> live from Langley here. I'm just playing with you. Uh, we are starting this out talking about the Arabs. You guys remember the Arab Spring? Yeah. yeah remember yeah. when everyone was like, Twitter is a revolution <laughs> and yeah. it's happening in Tunisia. That was an awesome time. That was like, you could get 100 retweets, which was the most amount of retweets you could get in 2012 mm-hmm. by posting like the, the thing that people did a lot until like seven years ago, where it was like you take several like crowd shots and you skew the hewing yes. on them enough. So it spells out like freedom. <laughs> yes. And it's like, this is the faces of all the protesters spelling out freedom. And you can get like Hoopa Sank to retweet it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, and that's what was going down in 2011. 2011, there were a, as I'm sure many of you remember or were like me, in the depths of addiction and despair. But uh, there were uprisings in Egypt, Tunisia, Bahrain, Syria, Yemen. And, uh, you know, it's crazy because, like, a lot of times in history, you know, you'll have this thing, this ball start rolling, and kind of everything will go wrong. But with the Arab Spring, everything went so well that it's almost like we just live in a different world now. And I would like to thank Jack Dorsey for that. I'm just playing with you. The only country that wasn't either racked by civil war uh, by the uh, a counter, you know, revo- or counter revolution or you know, reaction to the protests was Tunisia, which now has a yeah. Hojihis party, uh, which is in a coalition, which is in the, technically in the Congress. I think that's because the West basically was caught sleeping when that happened, and then you think so? Uh, yeah, because Tunisia is where it first started, and then as it spread, they were like, "All right, we gotta let's maybe contain this a little bit," you know, and they suddenly, you know, are. Uh, you know, giving Saudi Arabia, which we'll get into, giving Saudi Arabia the go-ahead on Bahrain and, you know, throwing their support behind their weird kind of counter-revolutionary guys in Syria and all that stuff. Yes, so I think they got yeah. caught sleeping and what, and they had to kind of like, you know, make sure it didn't spread too much. That's my theory. Yeah, I mean, that that's that's the thing with the Arab Spring is there were these like, there were these big popular revolts, um, very confusing messaging in the US. Uh, we were we were assured of many things by the media, which maybe turned out not to be so true. Uh, and a confused, I wouldn't I wouldn't say actually confused, but I would say mixed messages from our own government, which uh, claimed to support popular uprisings in some countries. And then in other countries, I'm speaking specifically about Yemen here. Uh, maybe not so much. Yeah. Uh, and so Libya also is uh, affected by this. There are protests that start there in February, and we will get into that in a little bit. But first, let's talk about Libya at the time. So Libya was actually one of the more stable and probably better countries to live mm-hmm. in in the region, I would say. Yeah, ruled by one Muammar Gaddafi, who I think is probably like top 10 best characters of the 20th century. 100%. I love- I love what an interesting guy. What a yeah. what a fascinating fucking person. But you know, Libya did go from one of the poorest countries in the world to per capita really fucking shot up there. I mean, everyone likes to talk about the change in standard of living when China, which great job, I'll never take that away from them. Mm-hmm. Libya very yeah. incredible. Yeah, incredible. pretty unreal. It was, you know, I don't want to do the CIA's job for them, but you know, it wasn't perfect to live there. It's not perfect to live anywhere, but like, you know, just as far as getting something going, Gaddafi got it out the mud. Yeah. 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 yeah that's for sure. They, I mean, they also had free housing, free healthcare, free education. Yep. I mean, it, they had a very robust industrial like city centers. There was massive infrastructure. I mean, the, the, the crazy like aquifer that they had built, not to mention all the oil that everyone knows about. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff. Gaddafi himself is kind of a weird mixed bag. He's literally definition land of contrast. <laughs> yes. Like, and he's sort of very like, I mean, you got to hand it to him. What was it? 28 years old. Takes takes the government in a military coup. Incredible. Mm-hmm. No, was, no one's done anything at 28. The Gaddafi, th- you know, those things that are like, oh, uh, uh, Post Malone was 37 when he started rapping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they never give up. I think it should be the opposite. Gaddafi was 27 when he took over. Yeah. If you d- haven't done the equivalent of that by then, you should die. 
Yeah, yeah, you should kill yourself. Like <laughs> that's the thing is this is this is why I decided last year to enlist as an officer in the United States Army because I figured first of all, I mean never never too late to do a military coup. Um but I've always wanted to be part of sort of a politicized officers movement and Gaddafi is my main uh, well Gaddafi and Nasser are really like kind of my two main guys there. But yeah, Nasser Gaddafi was swag. N- Nasser was one of yeah. the most the swaggiest gentlemen ever to live. Yeah. Um but but Gaddafi was by by 2012 something I will not not a not a relic, but uh he he was a, a, more, a lot more alone than he had been mm. in in the past and had uh you know consistently especially since 9/11 made a lot of concessions to the west um you know he had yeah. sort of a similar although as we see uh perhaps it was only his enemy in uh in there was quite a lot of jihadists in uh in certain parts of Syria especially eastern Syria where Benghazi is um and uh and he collaborated with the US government and with NATO in in um taking care of a lot of these guys. Uh, yeah. you know, there was, there was, a, uh, his intelligence services collaborated with American intelligence services. He, uh, he decommissioned uh, a lot of his chemical weapons, a lot of his WMDs, which I got to say another little true and on rule here. Listeners, never if any that. of you have weapons of mass destruction, never decommission, never decommission. Yeah. Yeah. Never decommission. You got to just go, you know, stay the course, look towards the lion you know, look towards Kim in the East and stay strong, my friend. Yeah, This is the interesting thing about Libya. One of the many interesting things. Um, they were kind of, for Reagan, they were Reagan's mm. speed bag. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whenever Reagan, like, wanted a country that wasn't in the Western Hemisphere where we could beat up on it and look tough, it was Libya. Libya yeah. got, everything kind of got pinned on Libya. And... In fact, in Top Gun, that's their enemy that they're fighting. Really? <laughs> like yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. S- same with Back to the Future. Yeah. Is the so, doctors being pursued by Libyans? Yeah. Um, and I like Gaddafi also, like in the last like 20, 30 years of his rule, was doing sort of like he was um, tap dancing, sort of, where it was like, you know, for one, he he had several arcs. One arc, it's Gaddafi the Pan Arabist. One right, arc, right. it's like Gaddafi the Pan Africanist. It's and he never really, the Gulf states never really liked him. Mm-hmm. Um, he never really no. got it going too much with Pan Africanism. Well, it he was, used to talk so much shit about the Saudis, which is, and yeah. he would like make fun of the Saudis for. I think it was like during the Gulf War. He said the first Gulf War. He said all this shit. Because he was like, oh, you're going to go support the U.S. and the U.K. in this? You're just like little puppets or whatever. And it's like, bro, the Saudis are not going to forget that. You know No, I mean? fuck like, no. They, the, the Gulf states were always looking at – I mean, everyone knows about the oil, and that's a big part that we'll talk about. But a lot of it, too, was like, oh, shit, we can get an emirate in Africa. That's what we want. You know what I mean? Like, this guy was yeah. pissing, him, pissing everyone off, the West and the Saudis, um, constantly. Because he, he also um, talked mad shit about everyone. He yes. was a funny. He was a funny guy. Um, he, yeah, it's interesting the contrast study between him and Assad because Assad mm. also did do not as grand and to the point that people don't remember it as much. But he did do a little bit of pivoting to the West. It's yeah less dramatic with Assad because just as individuals, um, Gaddafi was sort of like grew up in kind of a backwater. He wasn't from a very privileged background. Assad spent a lot of time in the West. He was, yeah. you know, he, he wasn't really that alien to him by the time he came to power. Um, he actually met his wife in London, but he did do something kind of similar to Gaddafi where it's like, Hey, I'm going to like work with you to like get these jihadists or like you can, you can basically, you can forward these guys to a Muka Barat. And that's, I mean, it's conveniently forgotten by like everyone. Yes. Yeah, nobody wants to, no nobody one wants to, wants to talk that. about that one. But Assad, like when it came, when he saw the writing on the wall, he's like, well, I just like, I have to hang on kind of because of what happened to Gaddafi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's yeah, like, yeah. Th- those chips are not worth shit in this casino. Yeah. I gotta absolutely. ride this bitch out. 
Absolutely. And the, the thing with, with the thing with uh, Assad too, is that like, I mean, America really put its support behind the, the FSA and the, and the, the rebels in Syria right after, I mean, the, 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 the operation in Libya took about eight months, I mean, from beginning to end, and they really had, had it sewn up pretty early. And I mean, Assad could clearly see what had happened to Gaddafi and, and that, I mean, what, what, what possible negotiating could you do after that? Um, no. I mean, it's, it's, and why, why would you, it, it would be, it would be insane to do that. I mean, that, that, that's the thing is like Gaddafi is, he, he had tried to be accepted by a lot of different, like, like you were saying, like a lot of different groups and basically none of them would do it. They all thought he was like no. either too, too uh, much of a loose cannon or he was too convenient of a punching bag for them. I mean, it, you know, he was blamed for basically every single terror attack in the eighties that yeah. wasn't blamed on the Palestinians, um, you know, often falsely, uh, you know, America bombed him, uh, I think on a few separate or bombed, bombed his country, uh, at least on a few separate occasions, uh, in the eighties and nineties. Uh, I believe once actually killing one of his ad- adopted daughters, although there was a, uh, a long term um, campaign by many in the media in the West to prove that was fake, which seems uh, sort of ghoulish to do and which they, they never successfully did. Um, but yeah, I mean, by, by the time 2012 rolled around, he was, I mean, he was too much of an appetizing target too. And he had made a lot of friends in the West too. I mean, in, in, in France, especially he had very famously basically given Sarkozy illegally $50 million uh, or 50 million euros rather in a long and tangled, like storied relationship involving some people being shot and thrown under the noob. I mean, basically a mafia type relationship. That as story we'll was huge in Europe too. It didn't really catch on in in the U.S. at the time because yeah. the U.S. doesn't really give a shit about <laughs> like anything that happens domestically in Europe. And also, they were trying to like probably tamp it down a little bit. But yeah. uh, that was, I mean, for the French, that was a big fucking scandal that Sarkozy couldn't really get out from especially because the Libyan intervention ended up being such an obvious total disaster. Uh, and I mean, that was like a big reason why they, you know, all these people ended up, you know, throwing their hat behind Holland in the coming elections and all this shit. Mm-hmm. Like he got really fucked from that story, yeah. which is crazy too, by the way, it's a crazy yeah. story. Holland was, as we all know, held accountable from the left. And yes. Enacted <laughs> French Medicare for all. Um, mm-hmm. There were some. There were always some allegations that Gaddafi did similar things in Italy. Yeah, and yeah. this is sort of this is one of those with fantastic bunga bunga, little, right? Yeah, before that, like he oh. uh, in the eighties, they say um, this is one of those things that I think I heard it from. It was someone vaguely formerly in the Reagan circle, so I really was like, this could be completely made up because those people loved making up things about mm. Libya. But mm-hmm. their allegation was that. Um, Gaddafi was very close with the Socialist Party and gave them gave candidates money. And so they tipped him off before the American bombing campaign that killed his uh, his adopted daughter. And that would have killed him, which that's what I don't believe that the Americans wanted to kill Gaddafi. Mm. No, they did. They we wanted someone to beat up on. We weren't going to get rid of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a very convenient guy to 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 blame everything on. Um, He also very famously uh, at one point in Italy hired 200 young sexy models to uh, come to a banquet he was giving, which turned out to not be a banquet as there was no food. And he uh, gave them a two hour lecture on Islam. One of the coolest, one of the best to ever do it. I mean, by the way, that's just a great move. Yeah. Like if you, if you're like, if you're like, yes, that's totally Sigma. If you're like, Hey, uh, I want to do some, quote unquote organizing. Hey, I'm an organizer. Yeah. Hey, this is how you organize. Invite a bunch Hire of hot women. girls. Yeah. And then, you know, proselytize. That's all I do. Exactly. Yeah. And, get and tell them to photograph also, it. Yeah. And tell them not to wear, to, to wear mini skirts either. Cause that was, that was part of the instruction. He also had, of yeah, course, his wrong. famous Amazonian guard, his all female guard. He honestly, dude, the gold the gun. We haven't mentioned the gold gun. The gold gun. I mean, the guy's fucking cool. You know, was, you, yeah. Like, whatever shrewd. your political leanings. Listen, I know. You know, maybe some of you were like, "Oh, I, I read the Green Book and it doesn't make sense," or whatever. <laughs> First of all, why uh, are you reading the Green Book? Don't be reading the Green Book or any book. Uh, you should you should only listen to podcasts. <laughs> uh, 
but you know the guy you know the guy the guy had a lot better ideas than most people if the secret service was all hot chicks i would vote yeah no he like if nothing else like okay you're gonna say yeah the green book doesn't have a lot of ideas well like some things are just vibe the movie yeah. miami vice doesn't have totally. a lot of plot but yeah. it's a perfect movie because it yeah. feels good you like you could be uh, Gaddafi. There were some things, some things about Gaddafi that were like, "Oh, you're trying to do like Chaz." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some things yes. about Gaddafi were. He was like an anarchist in a yeah. way. No, he was. Then, he was like, I. This sounds like this is not a thing, and uh, except for on Twitter, weirdly enough. But he was like a socialist anarchist in a weird way. Yeah. Like he. It's funny because Libyans, like at least from my understanding, is like they're pretty like politically apathetic. Which mm-hmm. actually is why it's really difficult for people to arm militias and train people <laughs> to do stuff there, which we'll get into, except for, you know, if you're working with fascists who actually care about stuff. But like the people really are just like kind of like, we don't really like the government that much. We just kind of want you to like, you know, take care of it, leave me out of it. I want to just like do yeah. my thing. It's just like they're really just, you know, it's that kind of like Mediterranean anti statist, like, you know, like Greeks, like old timey pirate vibe. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Like it's just that kind of like old old world kind of style. And what's funny is that Gaddafi like would try to go like uber communist and be like, okay, we're gonna have revolutionary councils. Like we need everyone to be way more involved democrat- democratically. Like blah blah blah. And people be like, no man, we're good. Like we don't really want to do <laughs> that. Like he couldn't get people involved. I mean, some of that is like cover because he's just in charge of everything. But he literally still couldn't get people involved to but, do stuff. Well, here's here's the thing, and here's if cons- listen, if you are if you are like a like Charlie Kirk kind of guy, and you're listening to this podcast, which I hope you are, because we are trying to appeal to you. Uh, you don't need to go off. Oh, it doesn't work, or like all these people die, or whatever about socialism. The fact is, people don't want to go to meetings. They don't want to, and that's yeah. where it all falls apart. So you're good. You can just say that over and over, and everyone will know it's true. Um, do you think? And, you know, like hypotheticals are anti-intellectual. It's, it keeps you out of real organizing, right? But <laughs> if Gaddafi had held on until 2017, and yes. he could have deployed Gritty. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> could you Dude, imagine? It, if if Antifa had, I like, if he had linked up with Chaz, there would still oh. be a Chaz. If he had armed Chaz like he tra- armed the IRA. <laughs> Do you I think mean, he actually did work with the IRA? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, he worked with. I mean, he worked with like the Filipinos and shit too. Mm-hmm. Like he was. He, yeah, Gaddafi would one hundred percent have tried to send guns to Chaz. Yeah, 100%, I know that in my heart 100%, of hearts. That is yes. the type of shit he was yeah. on. He was the great, awesome. awesome. And this yeah. is he what Hillary seen, took from us. <laughs> yes, he would have. Man, man. If for nothing else, the world lost a fascinating guy. Yeah. Yes. So how did the world lose Gaddafi? So this all starts in, uh, I don't, I'm not really sure how to pronounce this word, February, February, Feb, can you say what? it, Liz? You don't know how to the say word. February? Oh, wow. Felix, can you try? Because two out of three. February is when Valentine's Day is. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's February. <laughs> February. It's all started in February. Um, all right. So protests start around the 15th of February. <laughs> February, <laughs> uh, with uh, you know, this is this is this is you know, right after a lot of the like earlier protests elsewhere during the Arab Spring, you know, people are all chazzed up. Um, protesters start setting fire to police and security buildings in various cities, and then Gaddafi does what Assad does, which is I gotta say, if you are listening to this and you have people in prison that are under, like you can release and stuff. Mm. And if people start protesting, don't release anyone from prison. It is a terrible idea. Gaddafi releases. You're anti-prison. Abol- coming out as anti-prison. I, I, I'm just, no, I'm just saying, I'm not saying prisons are good, but if I'm in charge of a country and people are protesting, I'm not releasing anybody from prison. Yeah. I don't care. I'll do what whatever do you else I you want. I don't know why he did that. 
they're staying in prison. I'm sorry. Maybe I'll release them in like a year or something. You thought when, when that tensions this are- would appease the protests, which by the way, I just want to also say by this point in Libya, these quote unquote protests are strangely taking on a very reactionary <laughs> flair yes. yeah mm-hmm. like yeah. they are yeah. already like very uh let's just say arch conservative yeah 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 and and you know it's they're, they're very big in the east which is a lot more i mean as as far as i can tell uh sort of the hotbed of yes. conservative religious views yeah um he so he releases 110 uh militant islamists from prison yeah which i mean like the demands from the mistake. protests were release our jihadist brothers that you have in prison. Yes. So that's not yes. usually coming from like people demanding democracy or whatever. Yes. I mean, the protests originally started because uh, a lawyer representing a group of uh, families whose, uh, whose, whose family members had been executed in a large uh, like prison execution in the 90s of many like political di- uh, dissidents, meaning in this case, a lot of Islamist prisoners, their lawyer had been arrested and then re- later released. But the protests basically started because yeah. of that. Um, protests also at this point are wrapped up in portrayals of Muhammad in Western media. Uh, that was originally what the that was first Benghazi protest was supposed to happen. Yeah, exactly. That was a big thing. Cartoonists say, on notice. To 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 my Muslim brothers and sisters out there, I will never draw Muhammad. Like yeah. that is a true and on guarantee. I don't even know what he looks like. First of all, uh, we can't draw. So yeah. You're safe I really, there. yeah, I really cannot. Uh, there's a lot of really confusing reports in the media. It, it's super contradictory. If you were reading it at the time, it it because I, I went back and looked at a lot of the coverage. It, it was truly insane. I, I, yeah. I mean, the protests become militarized super quickly because when they burn the police stations, when they burn like the security outposts, a lot of the protesters also take the guns from them. Uh, and then use those guns. And so there are a lot of clashes between protesters and the police and, and military. Um, it is, it is a, a, it is not going well basically for the government because you don't want a bunch of people to burn down police stations and and take weapons. And so these sort of small scale clashes start occurring, uh, bodies start, you know, racking up on both sides there. But in the Western media, it is portrayed as like fully just a Gaddafi crackdown on protesters. They're being slaughtered in the streets. The government is deploying the very worst of its security services and basically mowing down protesters. At this point, they're saying thousands are being killed, uh, yeah, that's which we will not later happening. find was not true. Yeah, no. exactly. Uh, and eventually, you know, within a few weeks, this becomes a civil war. Also, uh, one of Gaddafi's son's model girlfriends, uh, a woman named Vanessa Hessler, who is, I will say, a 10 out of 10 smoke show, is forced to break up with him by her modeling agency. Uh, and really? And by the modeling agency. Yes. Um, Gaddafi's sons begin calling for general assemblies between the government and the people. These calls are ignored. Uh, and one of one of Gaddafi's sons, I don't remember which. Uh, in fact, I just didn't write down which. Uh, goes on TV and says- safe? Safe? Uh, main I, guy? It, it probably, yeah. Although, you know, he's got a few who are pretty involved. Yeah. Uh, goes on TV and, and tells a lot of these protesters it, that, you know, do you think Europe, NATO, the US will accept an Islamic emirate in the middle of the Mediterranean? Uh, turns out they will. Yeah, they kind of wanted that. They that. were like, that would be good. <laughs> um, yes. That, that's, yes, that's the plan. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Well, oh, what do, you, what do you think? That the NATO axis wants chaos everywhere? Uh, crazy. Oh, is that what you think? <laughs> <laughs> and do you guys remember um, the story about Viagra being given to Gaddafi's mercenaries oh so that yeah. they can rape uh, yeah. with more yeah, stamina? Yeah, that was a good one. That reminded me, yeah, that reminded me of like the uh, November 2016 stories that were like, <laughs> I had I had my Gleek and Coexist bumper sticker on my car and I had Molotov cocktails thrown at me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, it was it was the the stuff coming out of the media was so insane and confused because it looks like, and this was probably on purpose, that reporters would just look at like tweets and be like, "This is what's happening." Yeah, absolutely. Like, because they're like, like, "Look at this new phenomenon where real people report on the ground," and the CIA exactly. and the State Department's like, "Yes, look at this new phenomenon where people report <laughs> right on the ground." So there there were reports of thousands and thousands of people being killed and even Human Rights Watch which is not a good organization in any way and is the sort of organization that usually says stuff like thousands and thousands are being killed 
uh, can only confirm about 400 deaths during the entirety of these protests. Um, that is yeah. uh, not the not is not the picture that was shown to the West. I mean, we were made to think that Gaddafi was just like uh, putting babies in front of tanks and then running them over with those tanks. Yeah. So uh, late February, the UN Security Council they unanimously approved sanctions. This is how it always starts. So actually, you know, going through this, I will say, and kind of writing out this timeline and remembering this stuff, it really does. You do see the blueprint kind of, you're like, oh, you're, yes, it's first this, then, you know, all the steps are kind of laid out, even though this whole thing was a fucking disaster. You can see the moves they make. So, first, you get February 26, UN Security Council approves sanctions against the Gaddafi regime. So, that means yeah. there's travel ban, there's arms embargo. Uh, the family's assets are frozen, and they also make an official referral to the International Criminal Court, um, and that gets brought up a little bit later, I think, like a month or two later, when the big G word gets uh, passed around a bunch, meaning genocide. Gay? Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, but uh, yeah, so they start saying we need to look into war crimes and, you know, whatever, get the Hague involved, which gives mm -hmm. the big, you know, that's how the liberal media, they hear that and they, you know, get all a flutter hearing about human rights violations. Um, One important part too of resolution 1970 you're talking about is that there can be no arms imported or exported from Libya. Yeah. That is like an important part that uh, that is added into it. I mean, because they're 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 trying to say, and this is what they always do. I mean, they, this is actually even dating back to the to the the civil war in Spain. It was like one of the big things was no more guns in the country. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like, you know, we got to limit the bloodshed. No more guns in or out. And a, a lot of this was was uh, sort of like a lot of the rhetoric around this was like we can't allow Gaddafi to import mercenaries and like have. You, I mean, the, the Libya had a giant store of arms at this time. You know, so there was no, they didn't really need to import any guns whatsoever, but that was like, that was an important part of resolution 1970. And, uh, as we'll see, that was, uh, that was, that was changed, uh, at a later date. Yeah. The other thing too, is that this is all, this is all stuff that like ticks the little boxes for the, like getting the, you know, consent from the kind of like chattering middle-class and upper middle-class in America, because, you know, remember this time, which is like Obama was elected 2000, you know, inaugurated 2009, just a couple years prior on like crazy anti-war <laughs> sentiment. Like everyone's yeah. like, we hate Bush. Iraq was a disaster. You know, you're going to do all those things. You're the peace candidate. You're the whatever, whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't a lot of like domestic support for any kind of like intervention certainly not in the middle east yeah. and they had the us had to do a lot of work um kind of convincing people uh, and you know a big part of that is saying things like these are just common sense things we're doing you know we're sending it to the right international institutions the international criminal court we're stopping arms from coming in and out everyone can agree that these are things that we should be doing you know what i mean mm -hmm. and so these I'm are all like important parts of that for sure it, it is funny because the Libya, the Libya um, attack basic or the attack on Libya basically just shows how much of an empty vessel the UN is. I mean, all of these things yeah, are ostensibly supposed to be solved through these international institutions. And the only international institution that actually carries any weight in all of this is NATO. Yeah, yeah absolutely. The UN, Which is the US. Yeah. The, yeah. the UN exists. So like, why do you think like, people like Greta Thunberg are always giving speeches there because it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> like it's yeah. like, we're, we're not playing the game deus ex. This is just, this might as well be model UN. Yeah. It's 100%. nothing. It is a nothing institution. I mean, as, as you can see in this too, like even the, the UN security council, like doesn't really mean anything because uh, you know, the supposed opposition in that, you know, China, Russia, et cetera, they didn't really do anything when like the, the rubber hit the road here. Yeah, totally. Um, I mean, during Every, this time, yeah. during this time in Libya too, Gaddafi's uh, Gaddafi's forces, or the, the Libyan government, is starting to retake more territory that the rebels had initially taken in sort of like the initial burst of, uh, at this point, what's being called a revolution. So, in later in March, the UN Security Council adopts this. this is the this is kind of like the nail in the head? The 
Resolution 1973, and this is the no-fly zone over Libya. This is the real Mm -hmm. contentious vote. Now, again, that's another word that sounds like super friendly. That's like very like, I mean, I remember this from, remember the debates with Hillary and Trump talking about no-fly zones over Syria? And everyone's like, no-fly zone, that sounds fine. Just like, people don't fly. (laughs) But, <laughs> no fly zone. Yeah, yeah. That it's is, like, no, it's just fine. It's like it's sort of like how when we're like there's bad weather and like no one can fly over Dulles. No one can fly into Dulles. Yeah. That's what we'll do. But for Libya, that's not what a no fly zone is. The whoever named that that it's is genius. You did a great job. Yeah. Knocked yeah. out of the park. It's, God, it's Samantha good. Power's dissertation. Whatever. Yeah. My God. Yeah. It sounds good. It completely obscures what it actually is. You have people in rap say it. Like when people were beefing with 6 9 they were like, it's a no fly zone in LA. <laughs> <laughs> what a great but, term. Yeah. I mean, and it's it, it, the, the, the actual resolution they adopt too. Like it, it, I've read it and it, it's, it's, it's sort of, I mean, these things are boring as fuck to read, except I like how they italicize a lot of words. Um, but but within 1973, they they do say that there's a no fly zone in order to protect civilians, mm. and this is also they also modify language in uh, resolution 1970 about the importation maybe of weapons in order to protect civilians too. Uh, this is uh, this is this is a pretty like and again like it sounds like no fly zone. It sounds really like you know non contentious Well, okay, they can't bomb civilians from planes. They can't do the Assad barrel bombs on people in in, in Benghazi or whatever. Uh, but that is absolutely uh, not not what happens. And and it's important to note too that they don't modify. Um, the part of resolution 1970 that says you can't export arms out of the country that is not modified whatsoever. So that is, that is still, uh, you know, remains, I probably, I guess to this day, I don't really know how that works, but, uh, but that's, that's, I mean, at least for the immediate future, that is not modified whatsoever. Um, the the oppo- the countries about ten countries vote yes in the USNC, including like Bosnia and Herzegovina. Like it's, you know they they just add these little countries to there to like I don't know make them coalition feel better of or the something. willing. Yes, <laughs> uh, the countries that oppose are Brazil, Germany, India, China, and Russia. So it's a it's yeah. a it's a BRICS wall. You guys like that? Remember one? the BRICS? Yeah. No well, one I talks guess about it's still the BRICS around. anymore. No, because no, Brazil sure kind of do. fell a little bit. I guess and Brazil fell <laughs> off. Yeah, India yeah, India kind of fell off. Yeah. yeah, little bit. Um, the African Union, bless their heart, was like we yeah. reject any military intervention. <laughs> it's like okay, thanks guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The West doesn't um, care about you. Yeah, uh, and and you know there were there was a there was a pretty contentious vote around this too, and and a lot of the justification was given because of the Arab League uh, calling. Yeah, for yeah, yeah. That was the big talking point that Obama pushed around too. He was like, we have. Uh, you know, that the full backing of Arab nations because they said that the Arab League gave them a full endorsement. That's not yeah. actually true. There's 22 members of the Arab League. Only 11 were present at the time of the vote and six of them were GCC members, which is like, <laughs> that's just, you know, that's just client states at that point. Syria uh, and Algeria were, of course, against. But so what it basically amounted to was nine out of 22 members voted for the no-fly zone with basically the Saudis doing most of the kind of like vote whipping on yeah. behalf of the US because they made that fucking deal over Bahrain. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So it's time to talk about what actually happened with the no fly zone here. I think because, you know, it, 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 again, like we're saying, it does not just mean that you can't fly any of your little planes or helicopters over. What this actually meant is that NATO, which, which was given responsibility by the UN to, to, to take on this mission, uh, destroyed not only all air defenses, uh, throughout the country, uh, but they destroyed like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of armored vehicles, crippled the Libyan army and essentially ended up, uh, very quickly ended up, uh, basically just providing air support, uh, like direct air support to rebel groups, which yeah. is, I believe, not what most people think of when they think of a no-fly zone. Yeah, that seems like an extra flying zone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Totally. Sort of typically how they end up, weirdly enough. Well, that's the thing. If you have a no-fly zone, someone's got to police the no... Oh, if 
no one's allowed to fly here. Who's going to, you know, police the fact that no one's flying? Well, someone's got to be in the air to then shoot down everyone else's plane. Yeah. yeah I mean, that's exactly. like what it is. Yeah. And you know what? While we're up here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, yeah. You know, yeah. there's a couple other things we might as well take care of. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. I mean, that's why it was so horrific when you were hearing like all the talk about a Syrian no fly zone because you just. You knew that would mean direct confrontation with Russia. And you're like, you're out of your fucking mind, lady. But you know oh, what no, I mean? I, I strongly believe a lot of Americans just want to die. But they think yeah. like either suicide is weak or a sin or something. And I feel like a lot of like, I'd say like not many of the professional ones, but like amateur Atlanticists, like people who are just like, you're just a guy who's <laughs> just like fans. a fucking. Yeah, there are because there are some of those people. There's some freaks out there who like want that like i'm not, jeff jacoby is a great example the boston uh-huh. globe columnist he's not important but it's just like that guy just wants to die mm-hmm. he just wants to get nuked <laughs> like that's that's what i think that is yeah and it, it, it's crazy too because it's not like we're just destroying military targets either i mean that's never the case uh you know we're 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 bombing uh, it turns out I, I mean at the end of all of this uh both nato the nato head and like m- several members of the american military and joe biden himself claims that there were zero civilian casualties from the us air war which is not the case whatsoever we probably killed as many people as human rights watch says that gaddafi killed uh during the you know the yeah, crackdown the thousands, protests. i would say yeah 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 that's that's the, the upper estimate is in the thousands there um i, I mean it was it was it was a a brutal campaign in which yeah. we destroyed their like entire army and a, quite a lot of their infrastructure as well yeah they bombed out the mint so that the government couldn't print money that was a bit that was like a specific target they bombed out basically all the infrastructure for their like massive aquifer system that was like, yeah. transporting water like from the desert to the cities and back and forth because this is the thing I didn't mention, but this is true. People don't know that this about Libya. Libya has like a thousand year fresh water supply, <laughs> uh, yeah. like potable drinking water that uh, just as it happens that some of the largest private water companies in the world are French. (laughs) And so a lot of people make a lot of noise about Libyan oil and there are reasons to do that. uh, Absolutely. And natural gas for sure. But a huge, huge fucking thing, a huge, huge resource that uh, the Libyans had up until this point was just a massive, massive water supply, uh, fresh Mm -hmm. drinking water supply, which in, you know, sub-Saharan Africa means a lot. So yeah, that's all gone now, by the way. <laughs> Spoiler alert. And poor, poor Gaddafi. I mean, just going back to the 50 million to Sarkozy, that really shows what yeah. type of guy he is. Exactly. He sees thousand year supply of potable drinking water. Nestle, all these fucking companies, he probably knows or should have known what they're doing with privatizing water, with reselling water. And he's like, yeah, 50 million should do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the thing about this is that like obviously America played a huge role in this. I mean, we are NATO essentially and like we we did flew most of the missions, we dropped most of the bombs, we destroyed most of the tanks, blah blah blah. But like France was chomping at the bit to yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. bomb yeah. Libya at this point <laughs> and Britain as well, but France especially. And one can't help but think Sarkozy being like I cannot let this fifty million dollars shit get out. <laughs> like we got to get this because I mean, Gaddafi was probably like, I should maybe tell somebody about you know, like because th- that could have that could have complicated things for Sarkozy there. As it turns out, it came out later, anyways. Um, but I mean, what a bad fucking fake friend that is. Oh my like, god, if, so if many you, fake friends. I promise our listeners this: if you give me fifty million dollars, I will never kill you. <laughs> Yeah, like I think that's a good promise. Not a chance in hell I'll do anything like that to you. Sarkozy, different kind of guy than me. Also, fuck one of his cabinet cabinet ministers' wives, which I think is actually normal in France. That's yeah, over there that doesn't even make page six. That's not even gossip. The other thing too is that a lot of our like support for these rebel groups, which I mean, as 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 one can imagine, and as we'll get into, uh, were not exactly the. 
the most stand up liberal Democrats in the world was that Gaddafi was importing like these black African mercenaries and Dude. like they were slaughtering troops. They were slaughtering civilians in the streets. Okay. So I want to say this actually, this really pisses me off because a huge thing about Libya was that it, they actually, Libya had like a lot of jobs for a lot of people. It, I mean, yeah. and so a lot of sub Saharan Africans like worked in Libya. They like migrated and ended up working in Libya because that's where the jobs were. And so like there were just a bunch of people on the ground saying that Gaddafi was importing fucking mercenaries from like Niger and Chad or whatever, when it was just like people who lived in Libya. Yeah. And consequently, a lot of those people got lynched. Yeah, yes. they all got well, and then you know, again, spoiler alert: sold off in open air slave markets in yes. the wake of the American intervention. I mean, it, it's it's ugh, the whole thing is so crazy. It's so crazy, but that was a huge fucking media talking point, um, and and like was able to kind of you know help manufacture consent back home that you know this is what was happening. Yeah, I mean, and that's the other thing too. Is so you know you've got this talk, you've got this air campaign going on, you've got Hillary Clinton talking about Gaddafi doing a genocide. Which, by the way, you were right, Liz. Like people started saying everything was a yeah. genocide after this. Yeah, that's like, the Samantha Powers move. When more than fifty people get killed, it's a genocide, and you have a responsibility to protect them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the only people, the way that you protect them is by funding mod the moderate rebels. <laughs> My favorite, if my favorite term, if we're gonna rank them, okay, no fly zone is up there. Okay, responsibility protect up there of this era. Moderate rebels is like my fucking favorite because the All idea timer. of this like highly militarized, you know, militant combat group, but like for like centrism is so fucking funny to me. <laughs> like that when they're just like we're. I'm ready to fucking die for just like a decent government that's fair yeah. <laughs> it I'm makes no not. sense i am gonna makes strap no i'm gonna strap semtex and nails to me for like i guess like moderate social democracy maybe like yeah. parliamentarian system it, it's i mean when mr rogers talked about finding the helpers yes. what he meant was guys that you had in prison for three years for being in al-qaeda left and joined their own thing yes that's who yeah. he meant <laughs> Always find that, them. That was that was uh, that was trotted out so much during this era, and and Liz yeah. and I were talking the other night about this, and it's funny because a lot of people sort of I believe I think marked like the U.S. leaving um, Afghanistan uh, as as like the end of the war on terror, you know, something like that. Mm. People, I think people sort of a thought that end. marked like an end. Yeah, exactly. But like the real like end of the war on terror, I think started in 2011 when we were just like, you know what, we're joining terror side. Full yeah. stop. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, the shit that like from 2010 till like now, really, like, yeah, they were just like David Petraeus would write oh, articles that were like, yeah, wh what if we throw Al Qaeda at ISIS? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, just like, openly saying it. Yeah. Yeah, we should say, I mean, I want to say, who are these moderate rebel forces in Libya? They're literally like arch Arab monarchists. Yeah. yeah. They're the guys that, that like Gaddafi and his like ragtag group of like kind of like weirdo working class, you know, military guys like overthrew. They're like old school, old school Arab monarchists. Yeah, and and especially like in in a in in Benghazi and the surrounding areas too, there was a, basically a lot of like groups that if they were not Al Qaeda themselves, had essentially or literally exactly the same ideology as them. I mean, there there was a huge current of Islamism in uh, in, in 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 Eastern Libya especially, and uh, and it turned out that we were giving those guys not only air support but like destroying their fucking enemies too. Of course, Khalifa Haftar uh, comes oh, out of retirement for this, who, by the way, my man is still fucking swinging. Uh, I think he's got a great future ahead of him, and uh, and I support everything he yeah, does. Yeah, long time CIA survivor. asset. Yeah, yeah. Well, CIA asset turn. He, the man will just, like, listen, if you need an asset, Haftar's got you covered. Yeah. <laughs> he will do anything. Talk about someone who understands the assignment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, if you give him $75, he'll basically march on any town you want. Haftar, um, Haftar would become a Naxalite if you asked him to. <laughs> yes, 100%. He would. 
So all of this is to say that basically, like, there is no national uprising against the Gaddafi regime. Like, I want to just be, like, very, very clear. Like, what's happening is a fucking civil war between the, like, governing regime, the Gaddafi regime in the West, that's in, like, you know, Tripoli, versus kind of, like, a, you know, a, a ragtag group of arch Arab monarchists who you know, oh, coincidentally want the same, kind of like want to restore Libyan monarchy, much like Qatar and Saudi Arabia. How weird, what a weird coincidence. Um, You know, in in the East, which is like basically where Benghazi is, okay? And in Eastern Libya, they have sort of set up this thing called the Transitional National Council. And they basically just say like, okay, we are, you know, we're the new regime. They, this is what happens. They just announce themselves. And actually, funny enough, Sarkozy like <laughs> was like, oh, these are the only people that we recognize as the legitimate government of, yeah. of Libya. Um, but they just basically declare themselves to be the new government. Um, the these are the kind of like moderate rebel forces and they've kind of coalesced into this, like uh, this thing that calls itself a national council and is now being recognized on the international stage by these countries. So the thing is with the transitional council too, is a lot of these guys who are at the head of it are, you know, ex basically people who used to work in the government and they Mm -hmm. are not so much supported by a lot of the opposition forces who are for the main part, uh, maybe have some backwards views on uh, how how a country should be run. Uh, maybe aren't the best liberal Democrats that there are. Um, I mean, they're like which, pa- I would say they're like old school, like literal, like patriarchy. Like I, I, you know, not to be like some girl that throws around that word or whatever, but like they're actual like it's an actual patriarchy that they want. Yeah, yeah, but I, I'll I'll say like a lot of these guys like the the that in a lot of the groups that kind of come to prominence here are are even like they view these guys as like too liberal for them. Like they they essentially, I mean, they want the same things that a lot of people in like HTS, for instance, want. Is they they want a country that is uh, no semblance to government as as, yeah, totally. as people I guess might might uh, might recognize it. I mean, they have, I mean, you have some pretty seriously bad guys meeting with like NATO heads at this point uh, to coordinate bombing campaigns, mm-hmm. to coordinate arming. And a lot of the arms are coming through Qatar at this point, uh, which has been given its blessing by America, which means that essentially we use Qatar as like a middleman to get arms to these guys so that we can say our hands are clean. We're not violating uh, any UN sanctions or anything like that. Like Qatar is taking all the blame for that. And a lot of these, a lot of the, the Gulf countries are really happy to do that when there's, when there's, uh, you know, situations like this, as you've seen in Syria with a lot of these same countries as well. Um, the, so by, by October, things are, are not going well for Gaddafi. He is basically holed up uh, in the city of Sirte, which is his hometown and the last loyalist hi- uh, holdout. The town is being shelled indiscriminately by opposition forces, which is killing like a ton of civilians because they're like, we got this motherfucker surrounded. Like we're going all in until this bitch dies. Uh, he eventually leaves the city in a convoy of about 75 vehicles, but the US is tracking this. They, 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 they get a phone call or they intercept a phone call he makes on a satellite phone and start heading some gunships over to his position. Uh, they they paralyze the front of the column by dropping a big-ass bomb on it. Uh, confusion reigns at this point. They airburst a bunch of bombs, which is when you blow up a bomb in the air above everybody, and it fucks you up pretty bad, lighting a bunch of people on fire. At this point, a bunch of rebels uh, from, from Misrata, I believe, uh, come upon the column. It's obvious that they were coordinating with NATO and start firing on it, engage in a firefight with the uh, with the loyalist troops there. Gaddafi p- splits with his boys and is captured in a pipe trying to escape through a field, which, you know, fair enough. Uh, and things get a little nasty right after that. Uh, I, I mean, I'm sure both of you have seen the video of what they do to Gaddafi after they capture it's him. But hor- it is yeah, horrifying. horrifying. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like... Um... I don't recommend people watch it, actually. I think it's, like, really, like, one of the most horrific things that I've yeah, ever seen. It's, it's, like, it's like a disgusting video. I mean, what, Sadistic, what, what they do is, is they s- surround him, they beat him. I think they shoot him at one point, uh, and then they kill him by sodomizing him with a knife, uh, which is shown on the video. Um, 
he he his uh, one of his sons is with him is killed in a similar manner, um, and then their bodies are displayed in a refrigerator for anyone who wanted to see. Now this is a war crime, like full stop, ICC style war crime, um, and obviously there has been zero fallout whatsoever from this. Well, this was this was a great uh, great little capsule of uh, America. In the last since the fall of the Soviet Union, because it's like you do this thing that is it's brutal, it's like violent beyond what a lot of other people would do. You do it in such a way that you're not really directly doing it, but your your stated rationale for all this, what you're telling people, maybe you know congressional staffers, sort of whatever Ned Price was doing at the time, not at the highest level, but like, Hey, when people see this, they'll know not to, not to fuck with us in so many yeah. words. That's what you're saying. What it actually turned out to be was people saw that and went, Oh my God, you can never make a fucking deal with these people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing is Gaddafi's people had actually reached out to NATO and talked about making an exit for him and they were denied. Um, yeah. By basically everybody, everybody they reached out not to. Not just they said, NATO, the Pentagon. Yeah. Which they we'll said this is, is not happening. Like you are, you are staying in the fucking country. And then they justified it afterwards by saying, well, he wouldn't have done it anyways, which is an insane thing to do. Like they didn't even, they didn't even take the first step on that or anything. No. A lot of his envoys were really confused. They're like, why are they just shutting this down completely? And as you can see, they needed something like this. The other thing I want to mention, like, just so everyone gets a really clear picture on what happened, was that, like, Gaddafi and, you know, the the Libyan uh, Air Force, they had basically, like, won the Civil War already. Like, they yeah. had just taken Ajabaya. I'm, you know, my pronunciation is terrible, whatever, uh, which is basically, like, the city right outside on the road to Benghazi, like, the biggest city on the east on the road to Benghazi, like, about to take out almost all of those rebel forces, the TNC guys, all that shit. Yeah. Like they, they had basically won. They, you know yeah, what I it mean? It was over. And t literally two days after they captured that city, the UN security council authorized the military action. And it's not a coincidence that happened two days after that, because the West saw that this was the moment they had to take them out. And then the bombing started, they took out all the air defense and you know, Six months later, eight months later, Gaddafi is sodomized in the fucking YouTube video. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, that that that's the thing. It was on YouTube. I mean, you can find this footage really, really easily. I mean, you can find footage of, or excuse me, pictures of Gaddafi's dead body. I mean, it is, it is, it's like horrific. And it, and it you know, it's sort of a a fitting start for for what happens next because. Yeah. The, as you can imagine, and as you probably know, if you know anything about Libya, is it did not become a shining example of uh, a city on a hill uh, <laughs> in the Mediterranean. No, I mean, I don't know how else you can, I mean, it's just literal hell. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know, like, even the, the, like, you know, political science term, failed state, doesn't capture, like, what Libya has descended into. Yeah, uh, it's it's like um, Fallujah on steroids. Like I don't yeah. even know. And still, <laughs> it's like fucking yeah. like t you know over ten years later or whatever. Yeah, with no signs of progressing towards anything that isn't that. Mm -hmm. No, it's yeah. just like further and further like down. Like it's just every year is another fucking Dante's you know circle. And this is what's so frustrating about talking about the entire thing, not individual actions, but the entire thing. Like it was, Oh, the bumbling American empire. Even if that was it, you completely destroyed this country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And who knows if it's coming back? Yeah. Yeah. If, if, even if that is just bumbling, which I really don't kind of, I don't think yeah, it I is. I don't think so either. Even yeah. if it is, that's enough to end it now. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, it, it what what they did to this country is, I mean, it, it's they 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 totally destroyed it. I mean, I mean, there's 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 like no there's no semblance really of a state there. I mean, certainly nothing even like coming close to what was happening when Gaddafi was in charge. Like, it, 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 you know, you're not getting free housing anymore. Let me tell you that. I mean, not no. Jobs, kill a guy no just, government because yeah. everything's run by warlords. All that fresh potable water I mentioned, all the infrastructure mm-hmm. has been destroyed and is now parceled out by different gangs different basically al-Qaeda gangs, offshoots of al-Qaeda, yeah. <laughs> off-brand al-Qaeda, uh, as they parcel it out to Iran, Russia, Turkey, wherever, whoever's going to make a deal. Same thing with the oil. You know what I mean? Uh, mm-hmm. It's There's, I mean, hopefully our listeners know very well, and if you don't, please, you know, it's not my job to educate you, except it is because you're listening to the podcast and I co-host, um, about the fucking open-air slave markets. Yeah. Everywhere. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Women, migrants children, being kidnapped. Migrants. Yeah. Uh, sold off. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable what we've done. What we've done. Yeah. And and this was being hailed as a success. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. This was this was na- this was like the shining example of the Obama administration of like this is how we do things in a civilized way with no boots on the ground, zero civilian casualties, and very little relatively expenditure. Of, yeah. of of blood or or gold or anything like that. I mean, it was it was it was cheap, easy, and effective, and we took out one of the worst dictators in the world. Well, what's crazy is that was the line immediately after the intervention, and then the yes. tune changed right around 2015, 2016, when things started to be very clear that you could not, you know, put that on your CV anymore because it was such an uh, like you know uh, objective fucking. Uh, you know, d- world history level disaster. I mean, f- fucking Joe Biden, who I literally just remembered was the president, said, in this case, America spent $2 billion and didn't lose a single life. This is more the prescription of how to deal with the world as we go forward than it has in the past. Which, like, by the way, is that like a warning shot that he's firing? Are yeah. you telling people this is how things are going to get done now? I mean, it's... This is a fucking New York Times, literally like a week after Gaddafi's death. Americans are not often heroes in the Arab world, but as nonstop celebrations unfold here in the Libyan capital, I keep running into ordinary people who learn where I'm from and then fervently repeat variations of the same phrase, thank you, America. Yeah, and at this point, there is basically no functional government in Libya. No, still. Um, I mean, there, again, there still isn't, but like, you know, from, from, you know, we, we talk about like, uh, Chris Stevens, ambassador of Libya, you know, uh, all, all these things and make it sound like it's a country where, you know, you, you, <laughs> that, that actually has like a state, but really what it is, is as large parts of it is, is essentially a mafia state run by, uh, by tiny gangs, sometimes bigger gangs of different stripes, making money in different kind of ways. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it is, it is not a kind of place where you would want to, uh, you know, to raise raise your little babies. Um, yeah, as as such, I mean, you just really did not hear about it. No one really bothered to ask people too much about mm-hmm. it after. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It was real swept under the rug. Uh, Liz, you want to talk about Hillary here? Always. In fact, keep okay. that in because okay, I let's always do it. want to talk about you. Well, you said that. You, what What did you say about babies? What did you say? You said something about a baby. Uh, I said that the best way to live for a long time is to <laughs> scare a baby, and then when you do that, you extract the fear from it using a needle, and then after you, you know, do do something with the baby, uh, you inject that into yourself, kind of like uh, what's that shit that women put on their face? You know what I'm talking about? Makeup. They're like. No, the fucking shit that like burns their face, but then makes them younger. Retinol? P50. Retinol. How do you get, get, thank you, Felix, retinol. Because women are always like, my retinol is burning me, but it's going to help me eventually. It's retinoid, technically. It's, you're a fucking retinoid. It's retinol, dude. I know it's retinol. You can't trick me. Yeah, I'm a retinol user. Really? It still hasn't. People warn me it destroys uh, like large beauty marks. It hasn't done that for me yet. Well, wait, is it prescription or is it over the counter? Oh, it's over the counter. Okay, yeah, so it's a retinol. But the one that I burns t- and will destroy the mark will be a retinoid, which is pretty I'm not using that. I'm I not got out of Tijuana and buy a bunch of retinoid and then sell it to girls. And, uh, well, 
Echo no, Park. okay, so <laughs> I I want to, you know, we got to talk about Hillary because that is the most incredible thing about Gaddafi's revenge, which is what the subject of this episode is, Benghazi, <laughs> which I think mm-hmm. we can call Gaddafi's revenge, is that like this is this was like Hillary's baby. Libya was Hillary's yeah. baby. Um and it's it is weird the way that this Libya sort of like haunts Hillary's political career. Like she's not president in no, no small part because of the intervention in Libya. And that's like completely fascinating to me. Um, but she really, really pushed this. Uh, Obama yeah. sometimes gets, I think too much of a, like they let him off the hook a little too much. There's this thing that like Obama defenders do that really bothers me. I mean, Trump people are like this the same way too, but Maybe it's just the, a fandom thing, but it's like every good thing that in their on their little list, they make a list of like good and bad. And on the good things, they're like he one hundred percent did all of that, and that's all attributed to him and solely him. Yeah. And all the bad stuff, they're like actually that's so weird because actually he didn't do any of that. It was other people. Yeah, he was forced <laughs> to do that. Yeah, it's weird. It's like well, he's the president. He's either the most powerful person in the room or he's not. Like makes no sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't like to kind of like give him a pass on the Libya stuff. And I don't because at the end of the day, he was commander in chief. But yeah. I mean, it is true that that Hillary like really fucking pushed this. Yeah, that's the line that they always take. Yeah. Obama was saying crazy shit about Gaddafi, though, too. Like, absolutely. Yeah. There yeah, was like yeah. at one point he said, it's going to be very important for us to look at a wide range of options that can continue to tighten the noose around Mr. Gaddafi. Like Obama knows what he's fucking saying there. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, there there was no accent there. Yeah. No. Uh, the, yeah, the thing people do, I mean, the narrative that people, I think that the Obama people lead kind of was that like, basically Hillary did this at the uh, uh, on her own. And I don't doubt that Liber- Hillary was probably like a little more into it than other people, the administration. At the same time, you're fucking president. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah your exactly. secretary. If you, if this is, if we want to go all the way with what you're implying, if your secretary of state went off and destroyed this country, what the? Well, then why are you president? Yeah, where exactly. were you? He was yeah. like getting yeah, his yeah, Netflix yeah, yeah. brief together. Yeah. I mean, he didn't give a shit. That's not. I know. That's he was putting together a pitch deck. <laughs> they Literally. blame this all on on Robert Gates and then Gates and Hillary Clinton and then Gates himself, of course, throws Hillary under the bus because yeah, that's yeah. the that's the phrase they always use. It was forty nine to fifty one, like for and against, and like. Gates and Hillary were the people that pushed it over. I mean, and that's like, you know, Secretary of Defense and fucking, you know, the head of the State Department are telling you to invade a country or to, to excuse me, to bomb, just bomb a country from the air and don't send any troops in. Like, okay, that's convincing. But like, also, you can just be like, this sounds fucking stupid. I'm not going to do this. So I, like, it, you know, if you can get tricked, if you can get tricked, quote unquote, by the least charismatic woman, uh, in the world, then you deserve, you should have been sodomized. Well, it's not even, yeah, you should have never been president. It's not even no. tricking. He's looking at the same exactly. intelligence that she is. Like, it's all just fucking, bo- ugh. I yeah. don't know. The it's, whole it's, thing. A, it's a scapegoat. Yeah. The, yeah. It just makes me hate Obama even more. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it really does make me hate Hillary. I have to say like, there's the thing to understand too, about the like, okay. I had to like kind of get back into like 2009 mode for this, but remember that, like all of the, ch- and we talked about this on our other 9 11 episodes. <laughs> uh, you know, all the changes that happened in the Bush years under Rumsfeld with the Pentagon, where like mm-hmm. they beefed up the Pentagon like fucking crazy. Like they, mm-hmm. they really cut the State Department like basically out of any and all meetings. Um, and so there's like a real historical rift between the State Department and the Pentagon. And for the Obama admin coming in, they were, I mean, that still existed. And one of the things with Hillary is that like, you know, she's like Hillary's obviously, we don't, know if, we don't have to really even say this, but like fucking insanely ambitious. She just mm-hmm. was like a Senator almost, you know, feels like she probably got robbed from the nomination for president, you know, that mm-hmm. it was her time or whatever comes into a state department that, has like a fraction of the budget of the Pentagon 
and is considered like, oh, we're just like little diplomats. We don't really do much. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's literally the way it was. Oh, I'm just a small little diplomat. <laughs> oh, do you want to have a cultural exchange where you <laughs> send some dancers? Dude, basically. Oh, no. Oh, I'm so lonely. Like, oh, can you come? Can uh, Oh. Oh, I'm so depressed. I don't know if I I don't know if I can I don't know if I can even do another day. Like, oh, I love you so much. Can Kitten. you please respond to my Instagram messages? Kitten, Sorry. can daddy please send you cables? <laughs> yeah. Oh God, you're so beautiful. <laughs> Uh, wait, so I feel like I'm going. Sorry, I'm. I'm can going, we fall, going Donald along. Tusk? Can we fall asleep together in a Discord call? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Just FaceTime, FaceTiming like the 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 like cultural char- charge d'affaire of Kazakhstan and falling asleep with him. <laughs> <laughs> so when Hillary comes in, the I mean, it's true though. The Pentagon has like literally fifty times the budget of the State Department. Fifty times. Yeah. <laughs> and she's well, I like, mean it got really hurt during nine eleven. And so it's like you sometimes you gotta like be super nice to somebody <laughs> after that. Yeah. So Hillary's like going out and, you know, fucking basically trying to you know, work different political angles to get like fucking money from Congress because that's like where it all comes from is the appropriations. And so that's where you hear like you know, the Obama, the Obama admin being like, we need a return to diplomacy and all that kind of shit is to beef up the State Department into actually being a thing because it like wasn't because the Pentagon had unilaterally taken over basically almost like basically running all point operations internationally during the Bush admin yeah. out of Rumsfeld's office. So a lot of interesting things happen because of that riff. Um, and Hillary being the ambitious, like girl, while she is, is like trying to make a name for herself. Cause everyone knows she wants to run for president mm-hmm. and trying to get the state department back on the map. Like literally all of this kind of informs why she cared so much about Libya. <laughs> like some of it, mm-hmm. you know, the other stuff is that yeah. I think she genuinely believed the intel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there. Yeah. I, I think both of those those factors are true. But but uh, you know, w- w- I think what Clinton did see, and it's funny because this is also mirrored in like the Benghazi hearings. Yeah, is I think Clinton did see that like obviously she's going to run for president. I mean, she everyone knew that, and she needed like this big foreign policy win. You know, the State Department head is not the most glamorous. Post no, exactly. You can yeah, have. it's like think about John Kerry at the State Department. Oh, you can't because you don't remember. Met with Assad. Uh, there is a there is oh, a oh, that's uh, a great photo. Yeah, there is a great <laughs> photo of uh, of John Kerry and whatever his fucking <laughs> wife's name is meeting with uh, Alma and uh, or Asma. What's Assad's wife's Asma, name? Asma. Asma yeah. Assad and uh, and uh, and, yeah. and the the Ptolemish himself. Um, Two tall ballers. I, Jesus, very tall. I always forget how tall John Kerry is. Yeah, he's a hulking giant. He's like and six he's, four at least. And honestly, that should be illegal because the thing is, women don't like tall guys, and no, so they it's hate hard. Them. It's hard for tall guys to reproduce. Because women are just like, well, I can't even see if he's handsome because his head's so far up there. The two things women hate are when a guy is tall and skinny. That's their oh my least God. favorite. They despise build. that because, like, they what are you a freaking? That. And like, they're not. They're like, they always are. Like, I'm not freaking Jack. I'm not going to climb this beanstalk. You know, there's no fucking. There's nothing up there. Women want a guy who's built like the bald guy from the Three Stooges. <laughs> Mm-hmm. The thing is, women have been calling for a Holocaust for decades now. <laughs> like we, these guys are too big; they're eating too many hormone laden meats, and we need to cut them literally down to size. We don't need to kill them; we just need to remove the like below the the kneecap. There. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I'm like, I, I'm just at the cutoff. Like I'm six three. And like women, so like they, oh, so they've kind of like grandfathered camps. me in. I, I wouldn't be in the camps. They're like you, but you have the soul of a short man is what they tell me. Oh, and they say nice that as them. a compliment. Yeah. They say that I'm like the dwarf from ancient legend. That is cool of them. Yeah. Anyways, back to Hillary Clinton. Um, yeah. So um, my name, my name on the Zoom call, I named myself after this guy <laughs> for this call, but uh how do you, uh, I saw you guys have a little Mark Turry stuff in your yeah. uh, doc. Um, I love it. Mark Turry is a great key to all this and a great key to Hillary Clinton because like with many things, he's a little bit of an unreliable narrator, right? Like mm-hmm. he's, he's a little bit like 
this guy's like, I don't know how fully truthful he is, though I do think he was involved in some stuff. And yeah, the thing. So Terry is like this failed arms dealer from Arizona. Mm -hmm. And he was trying to uh, he was trying to make money by selling guns in Libya to rebel groups. There was that prohibition against selling it directly to Libya, but he tried to he, he did get a sign off from the State Department he says for his plan yeah. to move them to Qatar, who would then sell them to Libya. Yeah. I think this was probably the case, but he does go, he, he, he goes in some wild directions. The funny thing about, uh, Terry is that he was turned into like sort of a Teacot era, like cause celebra for conservatives. And yeah, he was say, on like he, like a lot of interviews on TV and stuff. Like he was sort of like a pre Benghazi Benghazi. Or no, I mean this was actually post this was yeah right? yeah. He got because he got raided because the license kept getting revoked. This happened to him at least twice. That they would be like, okay, sell the guns to Libya. Okay, there goes your license. Okay, sell the guns to your car. There goes your license. And of course, people would say like Hillary Clinton ruined this man's life, which you know, out of anyone who Hillary's like anyone who got their life ruined by Hillary, this guy deserved it. Yeah. Like, fuck yeah. this guy. <laughs> like, yeah, he's a fucking loser. Yeah. He, I, yeah. So this guy, for people who don't know, his backstory was that he his name was like Mark Dernal, you know, some like shitty German-American name. And he, mm -hmm. he like got hit with a felony for stealing computers. And then he somehow changed his name, but also got a new SSN. How do you do that? I it's don't know. I, I read that. I was like, can I, if I change my name no. to like Bryce Belden, do they give me a new one? No, no one at the CIA can. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's what, and it, yeah, I love reading about this guy because yeah, in the New York times, it'll be like, oh, he got a new social security oh, number. And, and just like no over interrogation like, of that. Yeah. I've never heard of that happening with anybody. <laughs> like what the whole or thing. Like witness time, protection and they just, there's a it. long, like, a, like, like <laughs> a Arizona newspaper article about him that spends more time talking about how he was molested when he was six than talking about how he got a new social security number. Yes. Like it, it's insane. But yeah, so the problem with Terry is that there's a lot there, but he tried so hard to parlay himself into like a conservative media hero that it's you're you're really trying to sift diamonds from the rocks here. Yeah. But there is a lot of interesting shit here and a lot of interesting shit with Hillary and and, and those damn emails. The email lady. All you have to do is vote for the damn email lady, CJ. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean that that's the crazy thing is like if you actually look at like what Hillary was doing at this time, it's like, why would anybody trust this woman i mean it's yeah. not like any other president is 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 much better than this but like her like duplicity and her careerism here is just incredible yeah um, it's wild yeah she goes and meets with one of the leaders of the tnc like the eastern libyan rebel group she goes and meets with them uh like two days before the un resolution and she meets with this guy mahmoud jabril who like kind of becomes a kind of minor player in, in Libya after the fact, but then I think is killed in maybe the second civil war. But uh, they, they meet and apparently this is what he says. He recalls the meeting. He says, I talked extensively about the dreams of a democratic civil state where all Libyans are equal and political participatory system with no exclusions of all Libyans, even the followers of Gaddafi and how the international community should protect civilians from a possible genocide, like one that took place in Rwanda. And then he's like, you say Rwanda to these fucking people, and they're like, eyes light up. You know? Uh, I want to be clear that actually Jabril died of another gen in another genocide. He died of COVID-19 last year. Did he really? He did, yeah. Oh, shit. Damn. That's yeah. hilarious. But yeah, he says, I felt by the end of the meeting, I passed the test, and Benghazi was saved. Benghazi was saved all right. Uh, cause Clinton apparently like ate all this shit up and was like, oh my God, he's talking about inclusivity. He said Rwanda, which is, that is like, <laughs> that is like the MK ultra trigger for like Samantha powers or whatever yes. to go on like With humanitarian crusade. People of a certain age and a certain job, if you say Rwanda to them, they'll do whatever you want. It's true. It's true. Like if you go to DC and just like mention it in like a 60, 65 year old woman's ear, like she'll just give you as much money. Like she'll buy you a nuclear bomb. 
Yeah. And so that <laughs> was like the definitive moment for her, like solidifying her resolve. And I, I just think that you can, you, you know, Libya was Hillary's war. Like Iraq was Cheney's. Like I really yeah, just feel 100%. like these people own that. Um, I mean, the U S had its, you know, I think the U S was intent on overthrowing Gaddafi since he came to power, but really this was like, this really was Hillary's baby. And she fucking, you know what? She owned up to it in the big Aussie hearing. She said this was my, she finally took accountability for Libya mm-hmm. via Benghazi. But it's funny. It's interesting because the Pentagon like tried to undermine her completely and they had opened up uh, communication lines with Gadda- one of Gaddafi's kids and were basically saying, Hillary's saying all this stuff, but we don't believe it. We're trying to get you help. I mean, so this stuff going on between the Pentagon and the State Department is really important. They're, they fucking hate each other. And a lot of this has to do with also the State Department's very, very cozy relationship with the CIA. Yeah, because they're, they're like the civilian branch of it. Exactly. And so these guys are always, you know, I mean, it's just a fucking bureaucratic, like, clusterfuck. They're just, like, fighting each other over money. They're fighting each other over, like, jobs to do, over who's drone striking and who's taking care of what. Like, it's all, you know, it's a total mess. I mean, it's really interesting in comparison to, I mean, I think, in comparison to like the united front that was like Rumsfeld, Cheney, Bush, yeah, uh, and you know their troika at the CIA, like it's a completely different fucking. It's a total shit show. That's what I'm saying. So one of America's greatest heroes, uh, Dennis Kucinich, is he's like one of the only people who's really against this, right? Yes. Like, and yeah, he, he is, like fucking tried really hard. Bless his little heart. He was like, Congress uh-huh. has to the War Powers Act, sir. No one cares. So the War Powers Act is fake. Like Congress never actually needs to vote on anything for the executive to actually like start dropping bombs on anyone they want anywhere in the world. Um, I mean, it is, it is like, it is basically a sop to like people who sort of make noises about liberal democracy or anything like that. And like something for like, you know, the like anti-war people in Congress to sort of raise their fingers and yell about, but like it, 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 it doesn't exist like as far as the actual, uh, reality on the ground is concerned. Well, yeah, because they don't have to, I mean, that's the whole thing. It's sort of like, you don't have to be like, oh, we're going to war. They don't even, we aren't yeah. going to war. NATO is just doing a no fly zone but yeah what exactly and it's NATO, yeah. not the u.s so why would you need congressional approval for that but kucinich bless his heart really tried he like <laughs> was like oh i've talked to saif Gaddafi. like this is not what's going on i'm gonna write a strongly worded letter to the president i'm really gonna go on the you know he really did try to like you know i'm making fun but only because you know i think he was a bit naive but, you know, he was on all the morning shows and everything. It was a big thing um, or he tried to make it a big thing. And Congress did, you know, kind of a little bit like wag its finger and say, we're not going to approve any war, blah, 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 blah. Made a bit of a headache for Obama, but didn't last very long. But but that's what I'm saying is like, is it doesn't, it's not a war technically. Like none of these like deployments actually have to be classified as a war in any way. Because I mean, the fact is like, as you know, we've talked about it, as everyone kind of knows is that like, War is different now. You don't need like 500,000 troops occupying a country or like these big land battles or anything. Is that you can have like, you know, either this air war or like a bunch of JSOC guys who are illegally in a country Mm -hmm. to do whatever you want. And like, so like that, that's the thing. It's like with the way that war has changed, like there doesn't need to be congressional approval on basically anything anymore. Or the State Department fucking just directing the CIA. Which Mm -hmm. is basically kind of what was happening. This is actually from one of the emails, the State Department emails. And it's so fascinating. The State Department worked, you know, very closely, obviously, with CIA, but for like drone strike approval. I didn't know this until I was reading through some of this. Um, But this is like how this worked with the CIA and the State Department when Hillary was there. The this was the then ambassador to Pakistan, Cameron Munter, which is such Mm -hmm. an ambassador's name. I have a yellow card, he said. I can say no. That no goes back to the CIA director. Then he has to go to Hillary. If Hillary says no, he can still do it, but he has to explain the next day in writing why. 
And so there was like all these bizarre, like Hillary is approving CIA drone strikes. Like what the fuck is that? This this that's totally new. That that relationship. I mean, state and CIA, like we've always said, very cozy. But that kind of process. And the only reason we know about that is because of the fucking emails that come out of Benghazi. Yeah. Yeah, that's something you've been harping on a lot is about how like these emails things were actually important. Like yeah, this, oh, this I'll go like off. scandal and yeah, yeah, we yeah, yeah. I don't know if you want to do that now or, or later, but there will be plenty of time to do it. It it is uh it, 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 it like we only know about a lot of the stuff because of the leaked emails. And so it's like it's good that they were hacked and it's good that they were released because we wouldn't have this sort of insight without that. Yeah. Well, I'll also say there were ones that were hacked, there were ones that were leaked, and there were ones that were released. And there's actually three email scandals that encompass the but her emails uh, that group, was- and they're all different, and they're all like have different purposes and tell us different things. That was an amazing, an amazing thing. The uh, s- the amount that people jerk themselves off over it when people are like, oh. We're we're not going to publish hacked materials. Yeah. <laughs> do you remember that? Like, oh, I absolutely do. It's like even if you just take the one thing that the Secretary of State was the sign off on these strikes, like that seems very much in the public interest. A hundred percent. But I mean, it's good too because they did. They were consistent with that. They did not publish uh, pictures of Hunter Biden putting M and M's on his penis. You know, it's. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, that was, that was, I, I mean, I feel like that ha- so much shit has happened since then that like, that's like almost a distant memory. But yeah, I, I remember that there was that whole scandal, not even scandal, but like this debate about the New York times, if they should publish these emails or not. And they eventually, I think they did because it was in the public interest. Yeah. But like people got really mad at them about it and it was, yeah, it was, it's a whole shit show, but yeah, you're right. I mean, there were three different email scandals and they've all been just wrapped up into one and it's all been, been like, oh, it's fake. You don't actually. Yeah, Yeah. but it's like that's it fucking drives this like it really drives me crazy because it's like, no, there is the State Department emails, which are that was just fully. That's the email server, which believe me, I will. I will explain when we get to the Benghazi hearings and also why it was actually a big problem. But then there's the hacked DNC. No, excuse me. The leaked DNC emails, which is when Mm -hmm. during the election, the DNC email server was like leaked and a bunch of emails that came out about the DNC. And that's how we know about the fucking, some of the stuff they were doing with Bernie Sanders and, you know, uh, the media involvement with that, like, you know, versus Hillary. And then there's the Podesta emails. (laughs) And that was a fucking phishing attack that he was like dumb enough to be like, Oh, here's my password or whatever. It's like, do you want to eat a baby? He's like, yeah, this must be from a friend of mine. (laughs) Yeah. If you fall for that, like, when people got self righteous about that one, if you fall for that, you do not deserve, you deserve to be it. John Podesta. You, exa- what the you, fuck you, is wrong you, with you? You're and listen, dude, if who someone is sends John you Podesta email- if he's not falling for a fishing skin? There is no yeah. version of John Podesta that can't fall for something as stupid as that. I mean, but like, aren't you busy, like, you know, eating? <laughs> you guys know what I mean? Eating? No, but it's like, so there's three a different baby? ones that tell us, you know, remember, Podesta ones, that's where we've learned about Pizzagate. Um, uh-huh. There's three different ones that tell us like very different things about like different organs of power, whether it's the Pentagon, whether it's the State Department, whether it's CIA, whether it's uh, fucking the DNC, whether it's CNN, whether it's fucking David Brock, whether it's, you know, Comet Ping Pong, whatever Mm -hmm. the different organs of power. Um, But all of these have now you know, strategically been memed into one thing that completely obfuscates like what was the content and importance behind each of them, which is separate. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's so fucking frustrating because for example, with the state department emails and again, the email server, which is, you know, part of the whole fucking boondoggle, uh, you know, the stuff that comes out of there, like the thing I just read about the CIA is fucking important actually. Yeah. And in public interest and absolutely should never have been fucking stored in the basement of her Chappaqua mansion, which is so mm. crazy. Well, it's better that she didn't store in like a high up room because I feel like that would be easier to get into. And it for some it, reason it like it did really run counter to the other narrative about Hillary, which was that she was 
hyper competent. She was more prepared yeah. for than anyone in the world. Yeah. Didn't seem that prepared for this one. Oh no, my God. no, absolutely not. Also, it's not that private of an email server. You can just find out about it. Yeah. Well, no. that was the big problem with it. Exactly. I know. <laughs> but I'm like, it's like, how private is this? We should just call it an email server because it clearly was not very private except for a certain amount. Of it reminded me of when, um, Trump bombed Syria for the first time in his administration. They're like, oh, we hit Assad's secret base. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not so secret. Yeah, yeah, yes. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's finally time to talk about what we've gathered you here to talk about, uh, which is the movie The Innocence of Muslims. Psych, just kidding. You're going to have to wait for part two coming real soon. Yeah, uh, I I got nothing more to add to that besides I, I love you. <laughs> I That's can't. also a psych. Yeah, psych <laughs> again, bitch. You know what? No. People got to bring that back. Psych. Yeah. It's good. Uh, Classic. I, I know. Well, I, the thing is I try not to do it too much on the show because I really value our listeners' time. Mm. Psych, bitch. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you. Don't say S- that. Psych again. I love you. <laughs> you don't you know do where I'm going out with it. Yeah, I do. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's oh, called the man. psych out. Um, no, but but yeah, we we. I'm really excited for our next episode, Psych. I'm just kidding again. Psych again. Oh my god. Uh, it's a, it's the thing is, it's okay to lie to people if you say psych afterwards. Well, um, yeah, of course. That's how. That's the psych rule. Yeah. And so uh, with that being said, I'm checking myself into the psych ward uh, to steal medication from uh, younger, weaker people than myself. Oh my so goodness. I'll see y'all on Fentanyl Island. Uh, my name is Brace. I'm Liz. We are, as always, joined by producer Young Chomsky. Mm-hmm. And as you know, Felix was here. Uh, unfortunately, has died, psych. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Psych. Bye-bye. <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein.